11 IT Theory Module 2.1 Networks The definition of a network is it's a collection of computers or other devices like smartphones that are connected by a communication medium in order to share software, hardware, data and information. Now a communication medium is not necessarily a um, physical hardware um, um, channel along which communication can travel. It can also be Wi-Fi or the air. It can be, it's just the channel, the way that communication happens. Why do we use networks to communicate, to share hardware, for example, a printer or a server, to centralize data, to transfer files, from one computer to another, for better security, to keep date, files safe, to prevent people from accessing certain files, and for flexible access, and also for leisure. Those of you who do gaming have um, used networks in this way. What is bandwidth? It is another name for data transfer rate or the total amount of data that can flow in a given time. It's measured in kbps, note this is a small b, which stands for bits. So kbps is kilobits per second or megabits per second, mbps. Fiber optic cable is the fastest, then you get copper cables and then radio based media. A NIC is this card that is shown here. It's a card that fits into your motherboard and the um, connectors on the silver um, strip on the side um, come out of the computer so that you can plug different um, wires into there. So you get onboard NICs or network interface cards. These are actually built into the motherboard. You don't have to plug it in. You also get separate NICs. These are either plugged into the ports on the motherboard or into, the, into other ports. It could even be plugged into your USB. A NIC allows you to communicate over a network. So it takes in the data that is to be transmitted, it encodes it, and then sends it through the particular medium, which can be um, UTP or Wi-Fi and so on decodes incoming encoded data and it makes that received information available to the system or the, the computer. You get wired NICs versus, versus wireless NICs. You'll see some NICs have a little um, antenna on them. The, um, we'll look at two types of wired media. UTP stands for unshielded twisted pair. Unshielded twisted pair means you have all these twisted cables inside, like this one depicted here, which is four, has four sets of twisted pairs. Um, they are twisted in order to prevent um, crosstalk on the cables. And unshielded means that there is no outer metallic shield which would sh shield the cables from um, electromagnetic interference. Um, the advantages of UTP is that it's cheap and it's easy to install. The disadvantages is that it has a lot of attenuation, which means that the signal gets weaker and weaker as you travel down the cable, as the communication travels down the channel. And after about 100 meters of cable, the signal's gotten so small it's no good. It is susceptible to electromagnetic interference and it's also susceptible to eavesdropping. So if for electromagnetic interference, if it's in a very noisy um, EMI environment, like a factory where there are a lot of machines producing EMI, that can be a problem. Eavesdropping is when somebody can actually um, tap onto the wires and even though they haven't damaged the wires or cut through them, they can tell what is going on and what signals are going through the wires and they can actually interpret them and then um, 
um, tap onto your communication. I found this homemade handheld Ethernet wire tap little recipe on, on the internet. The second wired media, we call it wired, it, no, it's not copper wire, it is fiber. It is made of glass. There are tiny little tubes of glass in the middle of the fiber um, channel. And um, there's light traveling down these, these um, glass tubes. So um, fiber optic cables are very expensive, far more expensive. They are more difficult to install. You need special terminators on the end of the um, fiber optic cable. And so it's, it's, you need more skill and better tools to be able to install it. You, um, it does have very low attenuation. So it can, you can get a fiber um, channel can go for much, much further before um, there's much attenuation. It can go over long distances. It has a larger bandwidth. That means more data can go through it per second. And it's mainly used as a backbone, which means on big networks, they put, they put a fiber optic cable between different sections of the network. These days, it also goes to the home. Many homes in South Africa now have fiber installed. So what can you do with your fiber connection if you have it at home? There are many applications. These are the different speeds. It goes up to 100 megabits per second. We talk about the topology of a network, a wired network. Um, the topology is how the network has been um, configured, how the wiring has been done. A star network, you get a bus network, which has one big wire and then each um, computer going off there and you get a ring topology. The most common one is the star topology and it has many advantages. If one computer breaks down, then the network can still operate. Um, wireless networks can work off Wi-Fi, which stands for wireless fidelity. This is a way to connect a network without wires. The range is usually from 10 to 100 meters. Um, an upgrade of Wi-Fi is called WiMAX. This has better encryption, so it is, has more security, more difficult to tap into what's going on on the network. It can carry on up to a um, 40 kilometer range, and it's made to handle more users. For wireless networks, you, you get many hotspots. A hotspot is an area, usually in a public place like a restaurant or a hotel, where people can use the Wi-Fi through an access point. You get a wireless router, which is connected to via wires to the internet, and this creates the Wi-Fi hotspot. Many public hotspots give you a small free cap, and then if you want to, to carry on using the, the Wi-Fi, you need to pay. The range of Wi-Fi, as we've said before, is 10 to 100 meters. Another form of wireless um, um, connection to the internet is cellular technology. We started off with GPRS, Edge, then we got to 3G, which is 1 to 4 megabits per second. 3G stands for third, third generation. Then we went on to HSDPA and then to 4G or LTE, which goes up to 100 megabits per second. And there are many cell phone providers which provide these. It usually works in a range of two to three kilometers in built environments. Um, although you don't realize it because there are so many cell phone towers around in a built environment. With media, um, the physical limitations are as follows. A UTP cable can go up to 100 meters. A fiber optic cable can be hundreds of kilometers, depending on the strength of the lasers at each end, which are 
providing the, um, the, the, the data signal. Wi-Fi can go from 10 to 100 meters and cellular can go to from 2 to 3 kilometers in built-up areas or up to 30 kilometers over flat open areas. The accessibility depends on where the cables are and access to wireless networks tends to be easier, of course. The different network sizes goes as follows. A PAN is your own little personal personal network air, personal area network if you tether from your smartphone you can create a little small network if you have a camera or a printer which you connect to your computer this is actually a pan it's usually used for short exchanges of data a han is a home area network you can come um, connect even your Xbox, garden irrigation systems, and these days it's getting fancier and fancier. A LAN is a local area network. This is a small area like a school or a university. A WLAN is a wireless LAN, and this uses Wi-Fi instead of cables. Then you get a WAN, which is a wide area network like a city, a country, or a continent. You may have heard of voice over internet protocol. This allows you to make phone calls over LANs, WANs and the internet to anyone in the world. Skype is the trademark um, for one type of VoIP, which you probably know about. The advantages are that it's much cheaper than normal telephone calls. The software is generally free to download. And it allows you to transfer files as well as make video conference calls. The disadvantages are that you have to have internet access in order to use it. And both users need to use the same software. You, if you want to call normal landline telephones, then you need to buy um, credit. And sometimes the call quality is low, especially if, if you've got slower internet connections. Um, and video, if you switch on the video, it will use up your data cap very quickly. A virtual private network is a network which instead of having wires, your own dedicated wires connecting the, the various components of the network, you use the internet as your means of connecting the different um, the different parts of the network. And the advantage is that you can then connect to a private network such as a company's internal network. It's useful if you want to log into the work network like you're, if you're at home or while traveling then you use the VPN. Location-based computing um, is when your location, which has been transmitted through the internet, is known, and this is used by a different application, all sorts of applications. A GPS is used to determine the location of objects, and then some applica applications are as follows: it might track your location via your smartphone. It could help you find a lost cell phone or car. Its um, cameras use it for geotagging, where each photo has a little tag to say where the photo was taken. It can be used to get directions like Google Maps, and it can be used in geolocation apps such as.